Good evening and welcome to In Demand. I'm Trudy Kerr. And I'm Jane Dennis and tonight we are looking at women in politics. At the end of 2014, only 7% of Maltese parliamentary ministers were women. Mm. To explore that statistic and much more and give us an insight in what it's like to be a woman in politics, we're joined this evening by MEP Marlene Mitzi and MP Marlene Faruja. Absolutely. It's The Marlene Show and first up we have Marlene Mitzi. Marlene, Marlene, you need little introduction. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> so Thank I'm you not, very much for I'm going. not going to give you one. Um, but I am wanting to know, how did you get into politics? Where does this all start from? Well, my background is not politics. And by the way, I like the Marlene show a bit. Do you? <laughs> yes, I, I like that. So the, the Marlene is also... Um, waiting to come in, so is the Marlene Show. It's, it's great, the first time I've been on the Marlene Show. Great, you can do some tap dancing <laughs> but later. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I've, I, I, I come from a business background. Okay. Um, but I came into politics basically uh, in 2008, so I'm really, I'm really new, I'm very new to politics. Um, I joined the, the Labour Party because Joseph Wiscott asked me to contest the elections for the MBPs of 2009. Um, basically, that's, that's how it started, and he persuaded me. He's got very persuasive powers. <laughs> but so this wasn't something you'd wanted to do since you were a little girl and you thought, I, I want to be a politician. This was something no. that you that found you rather than you finding it. Yes, no, that's not something I wanted to do, you know, no, absolutely. I mean, as I said, you know, it's eight years ago, so I'm really, really fresh. Yeah, those people have been in politics for many, many years, those who were in politics since the teenage. Uh, no, I was not in politics at all. And wow. how's that been, that transition, that people have been doing it a long time and you're quite new to it? Are there tricks and traits that they have that you're learning all the time? I think you're learning all the time, but I think, you know, I really hit the ground running as far as, 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 as politics are concerned because I had no time to learn in the sense that, I, you know, I was, I was really, I was really uh, into politics. Um, I was elected um, in 2013 because there were two resignations because they become ministers. Louis Grech and uh, Edrich Kluna. So I had one year in uh, the European Parliament in Brussels, and in that year I had to learn what being an MEP was. Yes. So this is the learning has been on the job? Yes. Wow. Great fun. Hey, oh, good. Like great Honestly. Fun. Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> in terms of the female aspect then, it seems that there's more, statistically, I think there's four out of six MEPs that are female. Is that so? For the Maltese delegation? For the yes, yeah, great. The, the, the delegation with the highest percentage of... Oh, all yeah. these women, yes, so, six, but yes, four out of six, so that's... Uh, and so that's oh, quite significant, and it actually goes against what uh, the representation against it, and in the rest of politics in Malta. Why do you think that there's more people, more women in the European um, arena? Well, that's a bit of a dicey question in the sense that I suppose we were voted in, the people who were voted in were the people which the, 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 the electorate wanted. Four happened to be women. But ladies, I have to tell you something. I don't really put a lot of, you know, importance to being women or men, honestly, because, you know, I've, I've always lived in a men's world. Um, I was the first person in the Chamber of Commerce to be elected to the council. That was something unheard of. Mm. You know, the Chamber of Commerce, a woman around the table. <laughs> um, so I've lived in men's world. My degree is usually what men would take at the time, economics. So it, it really doesn't impress me at all, you know. So when they tell me, how do you feel being a woman? I said, I'm just Marlene. You're just, <laughs> yes. I mean, this is something that we've had yeah, continuing throughout this quite series. A theme, yeah. We've been asking a lot of women, you know, what's it like to be a woman? And, and in, in what you do, and a lot of women are saying, um, well, you know, actually, it, it, it's no different whether I was a woman or a man. But you did just say one thing there. You said that you had done, your degree uh, was in an area that would normally... At the time. Be, at the time, yes. be dominated by men. So there is some sort of, sort of gender um, kind of definition there but by that, and it's very, very nature. Now, you're on politics on a, on a European, therefore global, 
stage, um, obviously because you're an, an MEP. Um, and I'm going to ask a gender-related question. Is there any difference? I mean, down to the nitty-gritty, is there any difference between being a woman in that arena and being a man in that arena? Have you ever... Has it ever affected you, trying to make a difference and making an influence? I'm speaking for myself, obviously, not yeah, for the other no, 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 yeah, women yeah. In, in, in the European <laughs> Parliament. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. It's made absolutely no difference to me. I don't feel inferior. I don't feel any less uh, capable. I don't feel any... No, I'm, I'm, I am who I am. I am a Maltese MEP, as, as important as a German, French, male MEP. Why should I feel any difference absolutely. because I'm a woman? Oh, yeah. but, uh, absolutely. Well, so you're not treated any differently? I'm not treated any differently. I don't expect to be treated any absolutely. differently. Um, in a lot of the committees we sit in, um, are, are very technical, and you find that a lot of women are speaking up. A lot of the reports are made by women. A lot of the opinions are shown by women. A lot of the declarations are made by women. I feel no difference at all. So I mean, absolutely nothing. No, there's a minority of women and of than men in the European Parliament, mm -hmm. but you don't see it. You don't feel it. No. Women are so vociferous, are so there. Okay. That you don't, you don't feel it at all. But yet the statistics reflect that there are less women moving into it for, any, for, for whatever reason. But it's not from your perspective because it's, it's an area that's exclusively male or is, is actively excluding women. Which is politics. Politics. Uh, well, the reason could also be, it starts from yourself really. Mm -hmm. I can't keep blaming society and blaming this one and that one. But... Um, we're still 2015, and the woman is still expected to be a homemaker as well. We have to accept that. Um, a man is not expected to be a homemaker. So a woman is, is, is expected to do two jobs. The career, which she's entitled to, and she has a right to, and at home, whether she has children or not, motherhood or not. And she's still expected to, fill, to fulfill those two roles. That is a fact. Um, that it is less, fact in, less felt in places like Scandinavia, mm -hmm. where the male role has mm. taken almost over the matriarchal uh, mm. function. But I think in, in Europe and in America, um, it's still expected, the woman is still expected to, do, to fulfill two jobs. So that obviously keeps certain women from saying, OK, I don't want to choose, I, or I choose, mm. as they have a right to do, to stay at home, to work at home. Mm -hmm. To, to be just a mother. Mm. That is a right for a person who chooses to have that right. Absolutely. Um, however, a lot of women today are being qualified in universities and they are seeing the glitter and the excitement of a career and the fulfillment of a career because mm. that's what it is. So, yes, that is not a choice usually men make. But then we are multitaskers, so, you know, we're good at it. <laughs> Aren't so, we just? <laughs> OK, so bring it so on. So make it work. <laughs> so yeah. bring it on. Yeah. And just in that, because you were talking about um, the roles of women and men, um, does it be, uh, how much does it being an MEP take you away from home? How much, oh. if, if there is a woman who is, you know, has role as a homemaker and she's thinking, you know, I'd really like to, to, to think about politics, how, how, how much of you, are you away from home and, and the country? OK, you have to be prepared for a complete change of lifestyle. Absolutely. Mm. Because we leave um, for Brussels on the Thursday, or Strasbourg, on the, on the Monday, and we come home uh, on the Thursday evening unless one chooses to stay there, obviously. I mean, if you have teenage children, that's a bit difficult. If you have small children and, and the husband who can leave a job here and go there completely, then it's easier. But usually it is, uh, you know, uh, transporting yourself, really, from Mondays mm. to Thursdays. So I say I live in, in, in three different places. I live in Malta, I live... Uh, four, four. Malta, Strasbourg, Brussels and the airports. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because that's, that's, the life, that's the life you lead. And, and, and people think that the travelling is the, 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 the most glamorous part of the job. It's not. <laughs> yes. It's the worst part of the job. Yes, absolutely. Oh, yes. I can remember but, when I know, first moved. It's... I mean, you know more than anybody I yeah, about that. I used that. to work in aviation, so yes, I spent a lot of time in airports over the years. Just so one... Sometimes I take four flights a week. Come on, uh, what yes. fun is that? Yeah, no fun. But that's part of the job, and I'm not complaining, eh? <laughs> so we don't get any... Uh, she's I like the way you kept I'm, not, not, the I'm not complaining. I love my job. <laughs> Travelling is part of it. Leaving the family is part of it. Leaving the cats is part of it. <laughs> Leaving my grandson is part of it. That's oh, the worst bit. That's really tough. Just very quickly, then, how much do you think... I'm moving away from the gender issue. How much do you think that Maltese people relate to the decisions that are being made on their behalf uh, in Europe? 
Uh, not enough. Not enough. Okay. No, not enough. Europe is still, Brussels is still yes. somewhere there, and Malta is still somewhere here. They don't realize that a lot of the legislation that we pass in Brussels actually affect each and every person of the 500 million citizens of the European Union. Uh, maybe it's our fault um, that we don't give enough information. It's maybe the fault, you know, it takes two to tango, basically. Yeah. So sometimes people don't want to know what's happening in Brussels. Um, because Brussels has been politicised, some people don't want to know about what's going on in Brussels, yeah. which is a pity, mm. uh, because I think there's more, more pros than cons in being a member of the European Union. I always said that. I mean, I was, it was never a, a secret that I voted for to be a member of the European Union since uh, the referendum. So I, I, I tend to think that, you know, it's better in than out. There are difficulties, but I think the citizen should be educated to appreciate more being a member of the European Union and, and the advantages, and there are challenges as well. But then it's up to us to change the challenges and make, turn them into opportunities. But is there also a natural progression because Malta hasn't been part of the EU for that long no. compared to other countries. So is there a sort of a, a would, would you anticipate a natural um, understanding and embracing of being in Europe and therefore it becoming more and more relevant and more and well, more, yes. and more well understood? Because there'll be generations obviously who, who have lived in a Malta that's not part of the EU. Of course, yes, well, I'm one of them. I mean, it's only 11 years and I'm slightly older than 11 years. <laughs> as you might have worked out, but... Uh, it's very honest uh, of you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, no, but I think people are warming up. I mean, from the statistics, when, 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 when you know, the Vox boxes and, and uh, statistics show that the Maltese are warming up to being members of the European Union, to be more European. Um, so it will get better. I mean, now a lot of people, those who are going to be teenagers in a few years' time, have always been yes. members of the European yeah. Union. I mean, 11 years, in three years' time, you know, mm. three years' time, they're teenagers. Mm. So in a few generations' time, Malta has always been, for some people, has always been a member of the European mm. Union. Mm. So we're bound to warm up. Doesn't mean everything's right, huh? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And our job there is to find That's out what, you're here for. Yeah. what is wrong, what doesn't apply to our country, to be able to, you know, keep, the disadvantages at bay. Mm. Hopefully. One thing, just going back to you talking about the travelling and having the four, four homes, <laughs> um, and, and just totally off the card question, but does that ever just get to the point where you think to yourself, actually, you know what, I'd like to put my feet up and not, not have to go travelling this week? Yes, yes. Especially we, we have what we call Green Week, uh, which is the constituency week, where you're meant to go back to your your, to your constituency for a whole week. And when that Monday comes, it's gone. It feels like you're getting out of school, you know, school holidays. I don't have to go back today, you know. And I love my job, huh? <laughs> but the fact that you don't have to travel and pack up and, and, and you know, that's... And I guess that's true, really. You know, you're representing people, but you're, you're away a lot of the time. So yeah. how do you make sure that you represent people and you understand what people are, people's real issues are that they want delivered in Europe? Well, uh, fortunately today, you know, with Facebook and the Twitter, people tell you exactly, <laughs> exactly what they like and what they don't like. So, you know, you keep your, your, your ear to the ground. And I meet people as well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I have an office uh, here, which is open to whoever wants to, to have an appointment with me and speak to me about subject. They speak to you from all sorts of spectrum because, you know, uh, different problems, people have different problems and they expect you to try and solve them. And I do that. Do that. So, yes, you have to have your ear to the ground mm. to see what people want. Because in the end, you're, you're representing citizens. Mm. I mean, I was elected because citizens voted for me. I didn't do it on my own. Listen, so, Marlene, I'm loving talking to you. I'm absolutely... Hey, me too. <laughs> absolutely really having a whale of a time. But we do have to take a very quick break. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere. Come back to The Marlene Show in just a few minutes. Welcome back to In Demand, where we have been now joined by another Marlene, Marlene Ferrugia. Nice to see you, Marlene. Thank Same you for here. joining us. It's a pleasure. We were talking there with, um, with the other Marlene about um, <laughs> having a career and then moving into politics. You have a career occupation. I believe you're a dentist. Yes. And so what made you want to go into politics? Well, I didn't go into politics. Politics came into me, I suppose, because we were always involved, as a family, we were always involved in politics, well, involved in politics at, at village level. But it was always something that was, was discussed at home with a certain enthusiasm. And uh, being a, a dentist, actually, 
kept me in touch with the people. And you get to practice village politics, professional politics, and then obviously then I said, well, I have to take the next step now and go into the real world of politics where you can actually affect policy making. But, but that's, that's how it came about. I, I always remember myself being in the political scene. I, there's a, as, I was the wife of a politician, I was a local councillor. Oh, okay. My mother used to be secretary of the, of the local committee, so it was always, mm. politics was always a part of my life. Politics it's, does seem to be embedded in Maltese life, it's been my experience been coming so. over. We've and, and there's one something which, which, uh, which makes a lot of difference, it depends where you come from. I come from the south, I come from Zuri, which, is, uh, which is, was very, very political, and we're talking 20 years ago, much more than now. So you couldn't just not listen to what's going on and not take part in what was mm. going on. It's very, very thick political climate at that time. And so I was absorbed in, like many people my age. Mm. It's very interesting coming from, sorry, from, from England, where um, it, I remember it being like that. I remember there was a time where it was quite political and, and it's much less so now. There's a lot more apathy now. So it's interesting to, to come somewhere where it is still part mm. of everybody, everybody's everyday life. I guess the same question that I was asking to, to Marlene as well. So from a little girl, did you think... Did, did you think to yourself, yes, I might have a role in politics, as opposed to you saying, Marlene was saying that, uh, that politics found her. It's always been in your family. So did you, did you actually, did you have that conversation? I might be going into politics. Of course. I used to say, I am going to be in politics. I used to watch Don Mintoff listen to his yeah. speech and say, I am going to be like him. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I used to say. So, <laughs> so yes, I used to You just listen. knew. Yes, I wanted to take part, I wanted to be part of things, I wanted to shape my future and everybody else's, <laughs> my God. So it was always like that. And as children, there was the, the, the street politics where, where I used to organise the whole street. The children used to come to our little flat <laughs> where I used to live. And so we used to, I, get, I get everybody organised in games, football games, all sorts of hikes and all that. So that is politics being practised at childhood level. I wish I so knew So then you grow up, you go to school, <laughs> and then the, the, the rest of your colleagues um, ask you or vote for you to be their prefect. Yes. Or to be, and then it just goes on from there. You're a natural so representative. It's, it's, it's just... <laughs> It's part of me. It's but when you were talking about then childhood and you've got these pe you've got people that are all interested in politics and you're saying your, your father was a politician, did you no, say? No, your my, husband's my father a was a normal, uh, run-of-the-mill worker, wage worker, but my family was very much involved in politics, not least because my uncle was the bodyguard of, of the Prime Minister Don Mintoff okay. at that time. So every single day we used to get to know what was going on in the inner circles around the kitchen table <laughs> while we enjoyed oh. the crostini and the tea, <laughs> dipping, <laughs> dipping biscuits in the Brilliant. tea. So it was always part of our life. But talking so, on the gender issue again then, you're a young girl, Don Mintoff is the, is the Prime, Prime Minister, Minister, and you've got, and I'm guessing there were more men in politics in those days, but as a little girl, you still thought that this is something that I wanted to do. You didn't think, oh, that's, that's what men are doing, mm. I'm not, I'm not going to do it because I'm a little girl. No, no, that never, never crossed my mind. I was always Good. part of the football games and of the rough games and always running around barefoot and jumping in the sea in winter and going to a cliffhanger and all that, all that stuff. But, um, and at that time, in my childhood, we're talking 70s now, I was born in 66, Mintov was like a god in Malta. Obviously, the political scene changed, and there were other politicians whom I really admired later on in life, and I started moving away from what Mintov stood for at that time. Not entirely, but in some aspects. But listening to Don Mintov, going to the mass meetings with my parents at that time, it was something that was way above us. It's belonging to something which, as a child, we used to feel that it's you're in the adult world. You're taking part into something bigger than you, mm. and it was bigger than us because we were that small and when you used to go to mass meetings you have people crowding everywhere but you still hear this voice coming in that very assertive manner and I used to be impressed. So, so, so you're saying in the same way that Marlene had said previously when we were talking to you just a minute ago that there, for you there was, no, there was no gender issue, it didn't matter that you were a woman, it didn't matter that actually the, the Prime Minister was a man, you were, I'm going to be in, in politics. <laughs> It doesn't matter whether I'm a woman or not. No, no. To me, it didn't affect me at all. So going in, so the reality of that, actually going into politics and actually taking that on, on board in your life, are, did you find any differences or challenges that, as a, as a woman, even though you, do, you weren't thinking of, of there would be, 
did you experience any challenges or differences that you may may or may have done if you were a man? Yes, the challenges were enormous and the hurdles were there as well. You have to remember, I again have to emphasize that I come from a village and village life is different from city life. And some multi cities more different than others. So okay. I came from a rural village and that made a lot of difference. But then again, when I came to, to choose my profession, or whether my profession chose me, I chose dentistry. And 30 years ago, more than 30 years ago, because I was 16 when I went to, into the dental course in university, so it's more than 30 years ago, there were no women dentists. Or if there were, there was one woman, woman dentist, if I can remember correctly. So I, want, I was propelled into a profession where people couldn't envisage a female dentist pulling out their tooth, because that's what dentistry was all about at that time, or that's what people thought. She okay. still thinks that. Still think so that. so, that's <laughs> so we used to, I used to go to the clinic, because then I graduated, and my, my, my husband, we're divorced now, but he was a dentist as well. We graduated together. So we used to share a clinic. And so when people came into my clinic, they used to knock on the door, and they used, I used to open, nurse, where's the dentist? <gasps> I, 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 I'm the dentist. <laughs> So, wow. so it wasn't easy in the beginning to assert yourself so that people accept you as a dentist. But then what I did was I went into private practice on my own into a more rural village than my own village because I went to Sijiri. Okay. And the first patient who came to my clinic told me, I'm going to say it in Maltese and I'll translate for you. أو جاي تعمل بنتي أو يقول خطيا يقول من يفتح يا هلا أخسر بنتي مرة أو جاي تعمل. so he told me what on earth did you open a clinic in Sydney for whoever comes here and opens a clinic they close and you a woman here I told him wait and see so well, my clinic is still there and we have dentists working for us and it has grown a lot so. It worked out, but it wasn't easy. It no. was extremely difficult. So both having chosen um, uh, career paths which were, predomin uh, were dominated by men, would you say that that also gave you a, 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 um, a, a background or a, um, an extra oomph when it came into politics to take that into politics? I think it definitely helped. I think it definitely helped um, because it gives you the, the strength to face the challenges, mm. not to back off. Because I think one of the things that most women suffer from, or one of the things that keeps women back is that when they find a challenge, some women tend to back off and okay. cite womanhood or being a female as the reason why they didn't make it. So that was never on my agenda. If he or she made it, I make it. I'm a human, I have a brain like theirs, so why not? Okay, on, on that point. That's the attitude that's. On, so good on that for point, you. I'm going to bring up uh, a gender gap uh, report. So um, the World Economic Forum is the source here. They, they do an annual annual gender gap report um, by nation. Um, and last year, Malta was 99th out of 142 countries um, for the number of females in Parliament. Um, so you've got countries like Malawi, Bangladesh, and Ecuador with sig significantly higher um, representation of females in Parliament. So that seems to be a Malta-centric thing. What do you think that is? Um, I think it's a, it's a truth, a big truth that we're living. It's a reality that we're living. The, the gap is enormous. But you have to understand that in politics in Malta, first of all, you have to get elected. And when you get elected, you have to envisage what your job is going to be like. Why am I saying this? In Malta, we are part-time politicians. And Parliament convenes up till now from 6 p.m. to 9 a.m., which is an unholy hour for mm. any, any family. We have no problem with juggling family with our professions or with politics, no problem at all. But that is very anti and a very anti-family time, not just for us, but even for the men. But we tend to feel it because it's the time when we get the family together to get the dinner, to get everybody organized and settled down. And maybe the men, I don't know, can't judge, but maybe they don't feel it. Mm. But even getting elected, in Malta, the, 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 the practice was women going, uh, so, um, men going into societies, band clubs and uh, clubs, which were completely men domains. You wouldn't, there was a time 
especially in villages. I, I'm restricting myself to my district, which is villages. There, there weren't any women in the, in, the, in the band clubs or in the clubs at that time. So even to go and um, get your message through and talk to people, you had this advantage that you feel very, very um, uncomfortable if you had to go into the band clubs or into these, these society places I'm talking about. I was very lucky because I was very naughty when I was young. I was the middle of the three. <laughs> so my father... Why, why aren't I surprised? So, <laughs> so my, my, father, my father used to take me with him everywhere so that I try not to get into trouble at home. And my father the was... coming out That's now. It. Yes. This is the whole political career. <laughs> and my father was a band player. And so was I, because by the time I was nine, I was playing with the local band, the Festa band in my village. And we used to have the, all the, uh, the activities in the village, like we had a small theatre company and my father was in it. I used to go in it. I was an actress in there and I took part in everything. <laughs> so going in, in, when, when the time came and I had to go and barge into these clubs and have a drink and the, the kirsha, you know, tripe with curry and all that, it was second nature to me. It did not affect me. I, I, I could do it, but not but everybody not, can exactly, do it. Exactly, but not everybody is like you. Exactly, not everybody can do it. And obviously the structure within politics as well, um, like you say, in terms of the, the restricted hours, they're not very, as we, as when we're thinking about a common life of a Maltese woman here, they're not very friendly to that life, is, I think is what we're saying. Very true, Jane, so but... Things Things can't change then to accommodate those that want to do What I was going it? to say is they have already changed. Because in my lifetime, that was the first time I contested. Now there's social media, which is full blast social media. The, these things are passé. You can go in any club you want and there are women there. Right. Even the, the people at the mm. bar in villages sure. are mostly women now. And they get family occasions and family family treats and all that in the, in the hub of Maltese village society, so that has all changed. For instance, in my last election, I hardly had had anything to do with going into these um, you, no. the places I was expected to be. I conducted my my interaction with the people in my home, or in their home, or between my professional appointments, or on social media. So it's completely different now. So even that drawback is disappearing as well. So my word of encouragement to women, apart from that we're going to put a lot of pressure so that Maltese parliamentarians become full-time parliamentarians mm -hmm. with normal hours. Obviously, if you're a politician, the concept of normal hours does not exist, like being a professional. Mm -hmm. But yeah. at least you can plan your life. At least you know that you have a nine to five presence and then the rest you can work around in your schedule, if you want to meet people or if people want to speak to you, you can... Most of the time, I used on Sunday mornings, instead of going to the clubs the last time round, my kitchen was open, I used to be cooking, and people come to my kitchen, and we talk around my kitchen table, and we drink coffee, and have the odd whiskey in the morning, or the, the odd... I'm, 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 I'm sitting here thinking, coffee. I want to be an MP. <laughs> I'm, I'm moving to yes, the it was, it was great fun, but um, I tried to help them understand that my way of doing politics was going to be completely different from the way other 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 people or men did politics. But the first time around, I couldn't do that because it was a different scenario, and I had been a mm. councillor with with the opposite party. So making the leap from the opposite party wow. to the yeah. Labour oh, Party was a, a monumental <laughs> I've got, challenge. I've got to stop you just for a second. Oh. I'm I'm loving I it. I, I want to listen pick to this, this up. <laughs> yeah. We're going to pick this up again in just a few minutes. We're going to speak to both of you ladies, but I've got to stop you just a second because we actually have to take a break. Don't go anywhere. Come back. It's the Marlene Show. Uh, we'll see you in just a few minutes. Welcome back to In Demand, where we have been joined by Marlene Mitzi and Marlene Faruja. It's The Marlene Show, and we're talking about women in politics. <laughs> Hello, Marlene. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I had to just say that to you. Don't need any name badges this week. Absolutely. No. Uh, actually, that's been very helpful for, for those of us who don't have the best memory. Um, listen, ladies, we have a female president, and other countries have fi female prime ministers. And you yourselves have mentioned that the, the, the political climate is changing. Is there going to become a time in Malta when there might be a female prime minister? 
definitely, definitely. We'll have Hillary, we'll have Hillary Clinton soon, President of, of, of the United States, I hope. I'm trying to <laughs> get her message through while I'm here as well. But yes, we, I, I do envisage a, a time when, yes, there will be a Maltese Prime Minister who is a female. Uh, note, I forgot who is a female, <laughs> because it's, yes. uh, it's a given. Yes, of course. Well, I, th I think that, uh, first of all, I think we would look forward to a prime minister who really deserves to be a prime minister. And we've had the present and we've had the past prime ministers who deserve the title. So that's the most important thing. Of course. And I think that eventually we're going to have a woman who's going to deserve the title as well. But um, uh, I don't think it's going to be a surprise. You know, I look forward to a time when these titles and these, these uh, appointments no longer make news. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it, so yeah. Malta has a, a female prime minister, so what? Yeah, they've had okay. them. Exactly. Well, my, my take on this issue is that I think that the political scene itself and policy making itself is already showing that the consensual, more practical, multitasked attitude of women is what the world needs so that we can face the current evolving mm -hmm. realities quickly enough, and you mentioned before, you're very quick, quickly enough and practically enough and sensitively enough and emotionally enough so that we can get to the bottom of the problems that are plaguing the global, global political that's, that's, scene. That's a very interesting so, point because you've, if we think about um, the number of women in Maltese Parliament, so we've got 13% of women in, in Maltese Parliament or a statistic thereabout. Um, but yeah, 51% of the Maltese population are, are female. Can a majority of men in Parliament effectively represent uh, both genders? Well, yes. Yes. I mean, it's a bit silly to say that men just represent the men yep. and the women just represent... God forbid that had to happen. But obviously, this is a mixed... 51% society, it's a mixed society. We need mixed representation. The present statistics do not reflect the the statistics of the of the of the population demographic statistics right, yeah. so yes we look forward to to um uh, to more women but i always emphasize i look forward to more capable people, people. Yeah. who can represent everyone and it doesn't mean that That's men great can't point. understand the problems of women or think, women don't understand the problems of men no i think you're absolutely right but if we've got if there by definition there must be as many capable women so where are those capable women are we saying that 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 uh, that's that group of women that aren't in politics are not capable because they're not in politics or is it because they're not in politics for, for other reasons Marlene has made a, ve a very valid point but on this issue being a, a parliamentarian in Malta now not on a European level I beg to differ because I believe that no the men who are representing the general population in Malta although they do their utmost and they really try to understand the way and how the, policy they are, the policies they are enacting and they're putting into practice affect the female take in normal family life, no matter how much they try, it is difficult for them to understand enough to having lived through the emotions of actually bringing up the children doing, um, practicing your profession, but at the same time being sensitive all the time, literally, to, to the emotional and, and other needs of the children. It's, it's not something that either a man or a woman can do on its own. Mm. We have to do it together. And there has to be enough female input into the policy making so that we get a balance of policy making that caters for the needs of males females and males and females interacting together as families. So I think in Malta, at present at least, we really need more women taking part in decision making because there's one thing being um, a policymaker, an active, an executive, mm -hmm. a part of the executive. And there's another thing being a politician who can say your, your piece and, and try to, to get your message through, but not being able to execute anything. And because this, ultimately, ultimately, the decisions and, and, the, and the policies that pass have, are, are passed and our legislation has been entirely passed with a majority of the male perspective. And even if me and Marlene are tomboys, you can call us that if you want, and we, we see both sides of the story, but not all men, not, not because 
but they don't want to. But even their upbringing might not have exposed them to enough sensitivity to the issues that actually affect women. But that raises the question, and, and we, you know, even the Prime Minister has said there needs to be more women in politics. We're, and, and as you've rightly said, Marlene, it's not about whether it's a man or a woman, it's about the right person. But we're all recognising this evening that, that more women in politics would be a good idea, it would be positive, it would be great if they're the right person. How do we get those women to into politics? How do you communicate with women and encourage them to get into politics? Because obviously there's some sort of barrier there. I think it has to come from yourself as well. As I said before, you can't keep blaming everybody else for what, to, for what you haven't done. Um, or, I mean, a lot of, unfortunately, even, even some of my friends will say, no, I, I won't do that because I'm a woman. I won't manage to do that because I'm a woman. Yeah. And the statistics you have mentioned in politics where there are 51% women uh, citizens as opposed to 49, this happens as well. And where are they? This happens as well in academia. There are more women than men in the university, yet in the working world, true, yes. in the higher echelons of business, it's still a man's world. Yeah. So where are all these graduates, uh, women graduates going? Mm. I always say there's sort of Bermuda Triangle between university life and working life where a lot of really clever women are, you know, sinking. Mm -hmm. So um, it's first has to come from you. Then society, culture. Culture is, is as Marlene saying, culture sometimes holds you back. Mm. Okay, so, so you, you, you're really preened to be a mother and a wife. It's less now. but. Yeah. Um, then, then the structure, the, 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 the structure of the political structure. Fortunately, for example, now we have free childcare. That, that helps um, elevate not only financially, but even, even the fact that you can leave your child with someone, you can pursue your career and be fulfilled and do something with your career. So society has to help that way. Um, we are getting there. Not enough. I still think that in the end, it's the persons who got there. I mean, Marlene has come from a background, as she explained, which is not really conducive to being a success successful politician, mm. you know, but she is because she wanted to get there. Yeah. So mm. I think, and there's so many clever women, and I believe in women so much. That's why I don't believe in quotas. I don't know if Marlene's... I don't believe in quotas either. <laughs> okay, good. Positive action, but no well, positive discrimination. So, the discrimination. So I don't believe in quotas. That's and some say, ah, big time. You, you, don't, you don't believe in quotas because yeah. you arrived, sort of. Mm. I don't think I've arrived at no. all. I'm, I'm on the way. Mm. But uh, um, I say, no, it's because I believe in women so much that they can cross the road on their own and they don't need a male person to hold their hands yeah. to cross. Yeah. But, you're but you want, right to, be, to, to, want to get to the other side. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're right about the Bermuda uh, Triangle because the, the, all of the shows we've had are talking to women who are generally in a world that is primarily male dominated. And we've talked to business and women as well. And we've had the question about women, particularly in Malta, are succeeding so well. And the gender gap report promoted how well girls are doing in education, but there just seems to be this big drop-off when they mm. move but forward. It's in, for the same the reasons that, that many women don't participate in politics. If we get the structures in place, like Marlene mentioned, a very important one, it's free childcare. Mm. But it, childcare, it's not just about being free, which is extremely important. It's about being what we want it to be. A reliable, you know what I mean, a place where our children can have um, a good backup to growing up in a healthy environment, etc. But apart from that, then there is, I think there is a lot of, uh, how do I put it, hesitation um, with implementing measures like flexi time and teleworking. And, um, well, I think flexi time is the most important because when you have, uh, when you give women the flexibility to deliver, and there are a lot of jobs which can work that way because there are some other jobs if you have a shop mm -hmm. and you need, and even there you can, because you can have a roster between women which they can, which they can organize themselves and you get them working really, really happily and seeing to their families when they need to. I run dental clinics. My employees are all women, women except one, not because they were women, but because they happen to, to be, be women. They organize all their roster. They organize everything. They even work out their pay, everything. I hardly have to ask questions. And sometimes during a session, we have two women changing mm. their presence in the clinic because they're backing each other up and everybody goes to parents' day and everybody does everything and everyone is... So if you give them the flexibility to adjust the way they work, you can still get a lot, not, not just a lot, you can still get the best 
out of out of the people who are working for a certain business, but the happiness that you see on their faces and the contentment that they work in, I think that is so the most rewarding. Yeah? There, there are some, some not in all, in all not, cases, in, not, not in all, but where it is where it is possible, it should be, um, possible. It, should, it, should possible. be yeah. it should be Lainey, a step I, I, forward. I, 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 I can't believe it. We could sit here and talk all night. See, and I'm sure I'm sure once the cameras <laughs> have stopped, we would just keep going. Um, it has been wonderful. Are we done? Are we done? Uh, we are oh done, unfortunately. We're done. And it's been absolutely amazing talking to you. And I love the fact, and I'm sure that you would say exactly the same thing, that you've both been so extremely positive and very inspiring for anybody who's watching who who would like to follow your lead. And I do wish you both the very, very best for the Thank future. You. Thank you. Um, I might even come and visit you to get my You're teeth welcome. Ay, 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 ay. Teeth, teeth, teeth. I'll come Absolutely. to visit you in Brussels just because it's nice. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. That's been great. That's, it's, been, it's been great. I didn't even know we'd come to the end. So we have, this has been In Demand. It's been fantastic. Join us next week where we will be speaking to some more fantastic Maltese women. Absolutely. And if you want to find out who's on next week's show or find out any more about these lovely, lovely, beautiful women, just go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash in demand TV Malta. Go and check us out, like the page, and also find out more about these ladies there. Thank you very much. This has been In Demand. Join us next week. See you then. Good night.